Welcome to the quest for the Green Bowl, the rise of Ralu Azath. After last week and with star players beginning bye weeks, we enter a stretch of non-divisional play where anything can happen. And after last week's performances, no one can really feel safe right now. The league is once again wide open in my eyes. There are some major matchups yet again this week, especially with the final two undefeated teams falling in a strange week six. So now all these games are important as there could be a lot of jumbling. We get a potential playoff preview or two, teams desperately fighting to get back into the playoff race, teams looking to make a mark and also get two rivalry awards on the line this week. It's going to be a banger of a week. One of those rivalry awards is actually in the game of the week. It's Ganymede's multiple scorgasms host Europa's Uncle Justy at the Secret Sea of Galanis. week at a location that may or may not be a surprise to you, the Secret Sea of Galanis. While it is probably common knowledge to humans about an ocean underneath the surface of Europa, many do not know about the subterranean sea that is underneath the crust of Ganymede. Your scientists might have the technology to find evidence in auroras and magnetic readings, but they still don't understand it. That was not the case for other civilizations throughout the galaxy that came here in the past. In fact, one particular section of this underground ocean was actually separate from other parts, and one that could only be reached through a series of underground water caves. It was dubbed a secret sea. An alien explorer Galanis came here and built a ship that could travel the depths of the moon. The secret sea ended up also having a bubble area, rich with vegetation and minerals. Galanis not only set up an outpost here, but also set up an underground city and built transportation from other reachable areas of the ocean. Travelers far and wide came here to trade. Some loved it so much they remained as the city grew. The feature people talk about most was the shiny, colorful crystals that formed the sky above, minerals and rock. All was well for a while until Galanis decided to explore more and dig out other areas of this bubble. Gases were accidentally released, killing many and forcing the evacuation of the rest. Galanis refused to leave the paradise and is said to have gone mad by the gases blowing up the transportation line and stranding millions to perish. And those rumors are not far off. You see the gas is actually a living organism, something that feeds on the brain waves of other living beings. But it decided to keep Galanis as a pet. This is a kind of power we can get behind. So for the one who resides here and all who visit, please tell us about Galanis and the gas. Just don't get too close, or you may suffer the horrific wrath of having your brain sucked dry until it collapses in on itself. <laughs> The multiple scorgasms are the rare underdog at home this week due to the buy of Josh Allen, with the computers giving Uncle Justy a 66.6% .6 chance to win. And there may be other moves here, but as of now, the big thing for the scorgasms is getting healthy, with the potential return of first overall pick Jonathan Taylor and the expected return of Amon Ra St. Brown. Still, the Derek Carr versus Tom Brady matchup at quarterback may be big, with both inconsistent this season. If Taylor is healthy, he will need to match up with the Elvin Kamara show to try and get an advantage. Also, Taylor touchdowns would, of course, limit the Titans' defense on the other side. 
St. Brown will need to go head to head with Jamar Chase, who definitely had a breakout game last week. And if Olave is back from the concussion protocol, he will need to outscore Michael Pittman Jr., who's actually shown some consistency of late. The kickers might come into play too with Greg Zerline and Harrison Butker going head to head. The 49ers defense is a true weakness for the scoregasms up against Kansas City. But there are two players that I really want to look at here, and both are rookie running backs. That's right. Starting with visiting Uncle Justy, I turn to Jets running back Brees Hall. The Jets are one of the surprising teams so far in 2022, and a lot of it has to do with the defense and with Hall's breakout from a few weeks ago. Many believed he would be the starter by now anyway, and Hall really grabbed onto this top spot on the depth chart with authority. He now has 275 rushing yards, 213 receiving yards, and three touchdowns through five games that he was on the field. But 318 of those 488 total yards came in the last two games, and all three touchdowns came in the last three games showing you how he's moving on up. This week, Hall does face stiff competition against a Broncos defense that ranks 8th against fantasy running backs, but the good news for Hall owners is that the Broncos offense has been so bad that this game is expected to be close throughout, and of course in the fourth quarter, unless the Jets are already running away with it, and even if they are, they're probably going to turn to Hall to get some much-needed yards and possibly move the offense. In either scenario, Hall should get plenty of touches. That doesn't mean that the Broncos' defense won't stack the box and force Zach Wilson to beat him, though. So, you know, there are some caveats here. While volume will be there, being an X-factor means touchdowns are needed. On the home side, the multiple scoregasms have Texans running back Damian Pierce. Pierce is not the dual threat that Hall is, but he does have 412 rushing yards, 57 receiving yards, and three touchdowns through five games. Like Hall, he has all three touchdowns in the last three games, and he does have 230 rushing yards in the last two games. He also has 100 total yards in the past three games, with 20 or more touches in each of those contests. So Houston is definitely giving Pierce opportunities now, and with David Mills at quarterback, it's expected that the, if the Texans really want to score, they really got to give the ball to Pierce and some of their other playmakers. The Raiders are 13th against fantasy running backs so far, but have only allowed an average of 81.8 rushing yards per game. So that's something to watch. So while Pierce will obviously have a lot of volume, the Raiders have shown they can slow the running game, and they may stack the box to force Mills to beat them. Like Hall, touchdowns will be needed to truly make Pierce a difference maker. And just like the battle at rookie running back, this matchup should be a lot of fun. And of course, a rivalry award is on the line with Uncle Justy holding the paddle from last season's win over the Scorgasms. Ultimately, this game is huge for Uncle Justy's playoff hopes, while the multiple Scorgasms do have a little bit more room for error in the Ganymede division. Regardless, both teams are expected to go all out and give the league a show. There are some other fantastic matchups on the slate for Week 7, of course. And we start with the 2-4 and four Siamese Dreamcats hosting 2-4. and four, The Clash at Demon Head at the Ship Graveyards at Beatrix Lane in an EO vs. Europa showdown. The Clash at Demon Head has a 53.1% chance to win, even without a defense in the starting lineup. Lamar Jackson will be needed for the Dreamcats to outscore Garoppolo for a chance to switch the script here. Elliott and Pollard have a great matchup against Detroit, and McCaffrey and Swift have tough matchups. Ellie Cox versus Ertz could be an interesting matchup as well at tight end. Next, 3-3 three three Green Acres travels to the Temple of SeaTac to battle a 1-5 The Stellar Bitches in an EO versus Ganymede battle. Both teams need to make moves still the last time I checked, but if the bench players are added to the lineup, the expected bench players, Green Acres enters with a 59.1% chance to win. Assuming he's added, the Dak Prescott versus Joe Burrow matchup is interesting, as is the Derrick Henry versus Najee Harris battle. J.K. Dobbins is dealing with a knee injury in a running back committee, so if Chase Edmonds scores, that could help the bitches. But a Keenan Allen return gives Green Acres a big boost, as well as the Jets defense taking on Denver. 
Moving on, two and four ARs Ayahuasca plan hosts four and two Loki Lebowski Thor at the Peaks of Dracos in a Ganymede versus Europa game. ARs Ayahuasca plan comes in with a 52.8% chance to win based on expected coaching moves. A.A. Ron Rogers, A.A. Ron Jones, and the Packers defense needs to step up and compete with Justin Herbert, Debo Samuel, and the Bucks defense on the other side, or this could go south in a hurry. Edward Zolaire does have a tough matchup, and Melvin Gordon looked like he was benched last week, so there are question marks for Lebowski Thor as well. This one is probably going to be close unless a surprise beast game occurs. 2-4 and four, Remember the Titans hosts 3-3 three and three Risky Business at the Polar Caps of Athanasu in a Ganymede vs. EO matchup with a rivalry award on the line, the Tripod. Based on expected moves, Risky Business has a 52.4% chance to win. Obviously, Mahomes is Mahomes, but remember the Titans has been searching for a quarterback to do his job all season. Will Geno Smith finally do that for him this week? Barkley and Fournette versus Mixon and Walker could also be key, and Kelsey versus Pitt seems like a big matchup at tight end. Stevenson does have an edge for Remember the Titans at Flex, but the Patriots defense has the edge for Risky Business. Lastly, we get one of the most epic of matchups so far this season in the league with two 5-1 teams going head-to-head, all-out battle. Top-ranked elite Mother Tuckers hosts my second-ranked Dark Ridge Dreamers at the Volcanic Plateaus of Vulcan in an EO vs. Europa match. Of course, we're both in first place in our divisions as well. Buys galore for us, but the elite mother tuckers do come in with a 66% chance to win. Kyler Murray versus Matt Ryan is big because both quarterbacks have good and terrible days. Chubb versus Eckler will clearly be key, as will Robbins and Drake versus Jacobs and Mostert. Hill versus Waddle is intriguing as well, as both have been doing well. Waddle does have a banged up shoulder, though. The Cowboys versus the Ravens defense seems to loom large as well. Regardless of what happens this week, there will be a lot left to play for, although one team is now in serious danger of having an almost impossible climb back unless a win streak starts now. The 2-4 and four teams obviously need wins to stay in the hunt uh, as the end of this week marks the... Uh, end of the first half of our regular season we've reached the halfway point here it should be fun and nerve-wracking for all of us that's the content for the show hope you enjoyed it join me sunday as green acres drops in to talk a little bit about his game of the week win until next time salute and check out the updated standings before you go